All right, so today we're going to be looking at two different types of two functional groups. They're given different names. We're looking at ketones and aldehydes. Looking at the, those two molecules, can you tell which one's a ketone and which one's an aldehyde or what the difference is between them? They both have that carbon chain that's going to be true for everything we do in organic chem. And that carbon chain has on it an oxygen double bonded to a carbon. I'll give you another hint. Let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six double bonded oxygen there, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And now that one, this one's still a ketone. This one is an aldehyde. All right, so have you figured out the difference between a ketone and an aldehyde? Here's the thing. So both of them are oxygens double bonded to a carbon in a chain. Ketones as if that oxygen's bo double bonded to a carbon in the middle of the chain, any of the middle ones. So it could have been that one, that one, that one, or that one. Aldehydes are where the oxygen is double bonded to an end carbon. So in this case, it was that one. I easily could have put it over here. So long as it was one of the two end carbons that the oxygen is double bonded to, that's still an aldehyde. Naming these things is going to, naming ketones is going to stick with the rules we already know, where we number the carbon and that indicates what carbon that functional group's on. So for, for this one right here, parent chain is, is three. So we have prop. My carbons are all single bonded together. So propan, the, the oxygen here, double bonded coming off of carbon number two, propan two own. That O-N-E indicates that oxygen double bonded to it. So coming down here, as it looks pretty sloppy, one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbons. So I'm using a hex, all single bonded together, hexan. Um, numbering wise, I can go one, two, three, four, five. I could have my ketone group coming off of carbon number five or coming off of one, two. Two is a smaller number. Hexan two own because once again ketones we just change the naming the end of the word 10 with o and e with aldehydes they're way easier to name essentially the aldehydes are always numbered so that they get number one so that carbon double bonded to the oxygen is number one we don't have to worry about numbering these things like this one here is still, oh, that's not an o that's a three so this is still propan. Aldehydes, we just changed the name so it goes with AL, propanal. So we have propane, propene, propine. Propanol, which is with an OL. We have propanone, that's if it's a ketone. In fact, for this one, we wouldn't even need the number. There's only one place for propane to be a ketone. Now we have propanal, which doesn't get numbered at all, which makes it easier. So down here, once again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. We're using hexan. And then indicate it's an aldehyde. It's essentially that oxygen is double bonded to a carbon at the end. Al. Hexanal. Pretty easy. Let's go through just two more examples here. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Taking the guesswork out of it. Methyl group. You know what? We're actually going to go two methyl groups. All right. So let's name this guy. Once again, number of the chain. One, two, three, four, five. Five. So I'm using a pent. All of those carbons are single bonded together. So pentan. Uh, I can do the ketone next, or I could take care of my two groups up here. Let's take care of the oxygen first. Propan. That double bonded oxygen is on number three own all right so now i can take care of these two groups here that's one carbon that's one carbon a one carbon group is a methyl group in this case i have two of them so that's dimethyl and i have methyl groups on two and four so two comma four 
dimethyl pentan 3 ohm. Um, one of the things here is you can't have a ketone or an aldehyde that's also an alcohol. So for instance, if we have If we have that, um, the alcohol group there, the OH group, that just becomes a hydroxyl group. So using the same numbering, this would actually be um, two hydroxy propan or pent pentan three own. Um, remember, if you have an alcohol and either a hexane, a, a hexine. Sorry, if you have an alcohol group, a hydroxyl group, along with an alkene, an alkyne, and now a ketone or an aldehyde, you don't name it like it's an alcohol, you name it like it's a hydroxyl group. All right, so let's do one more. We'll do that. All right, so... One of the, the hints of advice I would say is if you have a double bonded oxygen, double check, is it on an end carbon or is it on a middle carbon? In this case, it's on an end carbon. I would say let's even number it so that that end carbon gets number one, the one that's double bonded to the oxygen. All right, so we know we're, we're working that double bonded oxygen is on an end carbon, so we're using an aldehyde. Four carbon chain, so but, all single bonded, butan, Al to indicate double bonded oxygen on the end. We have a methyl group coming off of three, so this is three methyl butanal. Pretty easy. The rules haven't changed too much. All that we need to change is what's on there. So even if we looked at make that an F. This is still an aldehyde because it's on the end carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is still pentanal. But I have this fluorine group on carbon number three, so it's just three fluoro. We're just tacking on things that we can identify in these carbon chains the only big wrinkle with this one, once again, is we don't number aldehydes. It's assumed they're on the end, and we number them so that they get number one. It's just kind of like with the alkenes and all the and the alkynes. We gave them the smallest number. All right, I'm around in class if you need help. Otherwise, good luck with practice problems.